Hello, everyone. This is Jim Okrasinski with your weekly, eh, let's call this a lecture video, but it's more of a follow-up uh, about uh, the thinking in this week's discussion board, what's a good source. I think it's important to really emphasize uh, the sources that we use in our research projects, and I uh, believe that this chapter two content is very important for developing source material. I think we would all agree that as the inverted pyramid or triangle uh, displays, uh, this, the, the, the authoritative uh, aspect of uh, source material, um, I think we would all agree that academic journals found in the databases are really uh, the most authoritative. And then as we see here, some of the, you know, internet sources or encyclopedias or magazines and newspapers are, are less so. So I think it's important for us on our journey to understand um, how to use academic uh, journals. I know they're long and they're wordy and it's complicated. But if you take a look back in chapter one on, on page 38, there is some suggestions on how to attack an academic journal. Believe me, in grad school um, and throughout my academic career, um, I never have read a full academic journal. I, I work through the abstract and the introduction, more or less go to a discussion section where they discuss the results of it. I may skim through the method section, and then I point directly toward the conclusion. Um, so I just cherry pick information, looking for patterns, and I'll talk about that in a minute, but also just looking for uh, information that I can use without spending a couple of hours running through uh, a full academic journal. So um, Think about that method there. The textbook offers some good suggestions. So we all, everybody seemed to grasp the concept of peer-reviewed and what that means. But my focus here is to talk about online sources because we all have this tendency to grab the online sources. And I think it's really important that we're able to uh, evaluate those sources. Uh, figure 2.6 um, really um, provides a great flow chart on how to view sources if they're authored and unauthored. And I always stress that students use authored documents or articles in their research. The reason being is not only that you would think about reliability and credibility if an author is willing to uh, put their name to their words, as opposed to an unauthored source or a source that's authored by some department or um, a team of people that do not appear on the article. Um, I think it's also important to have an author because as we move through the annotated bibliography and into the actual writing of the research essay, you have to have a conversation, a conversation with your authors and your source information. And the best way to have a conversation is to have it with a person. It's very difficult to uh, in-text cite through attribution, naming the speaker um, when it's a title of an article or a web page. It's always better to use the author's name. It feels like you are having a one-to-one -one conversation with that author's thinking. One word of advice I'd like to pass along is that when you refer to authors, okay, print authors, online authors, any textbook authors, we always refer to authors as first name and last name, full name. So in other words, Bruce Ballinger, right? Or you can't abbreviate, but you use the last name only. So it would be Ballinger. I seen a, I did read a couple of uh, references to Bruce. The way I like to address that is if you've had Bruce Ballinger over to your house for dinner, then you can call him Bruce. Other than that, it's Bruce Ballinger or Ballinger, right? So I want to stress that. It really makes writing the research essay a lot more um, seamless, um, a lot easier to have these conversations and 
work with in-text citation, which we'll focus on in Chapter 3 and Chapter 4. The goal of all of this is to develop that focused knowledge. Hopefully, everybody is learning about their topic. If you're looking for source material that really just confirms your thinking without uh, learning anything new, then it's just a, a confirmation uh, research. It's like, I am gonna, I know what I want, and I know what I'm thinking, and I want to find information about that and disregard other information that might um, perhaps influence my original thinking on your topic. So we want to get to focused knowledge here. Then patterns are a big part of that focused knowledge. I think it's important uh, to look at some of the patterns. If you're really digging into some authored sources, um, you will see some patterns within your uh, particular uh, topic. I know we've got some great topics on there, and I know if you're doing through this research, you will definitely see some patterns and probably the same um, authors too. Now, one thing I want to touch on real quick let me scroll here to find it, um, is at the end of chapter two, we have living sources and interviews. If you notice the last category in the annotated bibliography instructions, I list interviews and surveys. Read this section, pages 67 to, I believe it's about 80, gives you some information there about how to... Uh, pull together questions for surveys, how to pull together interviews, and the instructions. I even list the page number in the hard book of how to cite a personal uh, interview in MLA. You might want to take a look at that. I want to be uh, clear. Any interviews or surveys that you use as a source for your uh, annotated bibliography have to be completed. Um, there should be no entry saying, I'm going to interview somebody. No, that interview needs to take place. You need to have questions, and you need to have the results, and you need to be able to cite that. Also, with surveys, surveys, I'm going to do a survey. No, no, no. You don't project source material. Survey must be completed. At the same time, then, in the, all of the responses must be tabulated. So if you want to come up with a short five to seven question survey. You can distribute that through social media. Students usually have a very good result on that, depending upon the topic, all right? So um, this is about the, um, yeah, this is about it for this week's follow-up video. It might be running a little long, but we're getting into uh, more um, in-depth conversations about the research process. If you have any questions or issues, please send me an email.